Welcome to another top five data, AI analytics and entrepreneurship post of the week. This week I am not in my car. I'm visiting friends and family in Seattle, but nonetheless, this is the 63rd edition of Data Driven Without the Car. We have a lot of predictions to go over, so let's get started. Gartner, Forrester, Andreessen Horowitz. We had the Modern Data Stack Conference going on this week, so certainly a lot going on. Many of you have sent me posts as well to share with this community. Amy, Carrington, Adam, I want to thank you for being engaged, and I want to encourage everyone watching this video to not be shy. Go ahead and like, comment, and make sure that you engage. It's important because you can use LinkedIn as a way to connect with friends and colleagues that might have the same problems and it allows us to build some of the largest and best conversations in the topic. Now let's get started. This week Andreessen Norwitz wrote this great piece called The Emergent Architectures for Modern Data Infrastructure. Now it's a mouth, mouthful if you will. Uh, uh, Matt, Jennifer, and Martin did a great job. They also got inputs from folks that we know in the community. Diego at uh, Algorithmia, Arsalan Databricks, Bob, Jamie, George have all participated in this great piece, which is deep and rich. So I encourage you to take 30, 45 minutes to take a look at it. But I'm going to give you the three main points in the piece. The first one is data infrastructure spends on fire. Today, it's $66 billion spent. It is 24% of all infrastructure spends and it's growing. So it's becoming important for organizations to think about where are they putting their money to modernize their approach to data and analytics. The second big point in this piece is the convergence between the data lakes and data warehousing. We've been talking a little bit about this as well. There also is another convergence, which is AI and BI coming together. Now read up on that because it's important. Folks like Rita and Svetlana and Carly at Gartner have written a lot about that. So you won't find about this conversion in this piece, but I think it's very complementary uh, to the talk track here. And then the third one is these architecture shifts that are happening, right? We know about on-prem to the cloud. We know about you know, specific analytics teams to now self-service. But the piece here highlights blueprints that touch on trends like ETL going to ELT or the global data governance and catalog trends that are becoming important. So you can make sense of data across silos in a way that is governed and also enable self-service. So great piece here to take a look at. If you're now interested in the other predictions that have happened that are going to complement this piece here, I encourage you to take a look at composable analytics. This came out of this week's Gartner IT Symposium. This is work that Julian Sung has done on this idea that if you look at the application landscape and the analytics that have been implemented in those purpose-built package analytics applications, they really haven't provided or delivered on the promise of analytics. So composable analytics is a way to think about API-driven, cloud-driven analytics that now are going to become components of your applications. And if you add to this trend the low-code, no-code platforms that are coming together and converging with these platforms, in the future you can imagine a world where the number of applications that are going to be built by you for your own use cases that are going to take advantage of intelligence applications and intelligent analytics will outperform or outnumber those package applications. Take a look at Gartner's research here. It's really backed up on two key predictions. The first one is that by 2023, Gartner predicts that 80%, 80% of analytics platforms will have a composable architecture, right? This need of being very agile and allow you to kind of compose your own applications using intelligence and analytics. And then the second prediction, which I think is really quite amazing, is that over the next three years, more than 65% of analytic solutions in production will be in the cloud. Today, that percentage is 31%, so it's going to more than double. So this component becomes really important as you're thinking about how you're modernizing data and analytics architecture at your company. So those are key considerations. Now you can read the research, but if you need help, I really encourage you to connect with folks in the community that have succeeded. This week I shared two of my great conversations I've had. Harish at Sunrun, who while modernizing his data architecture has led to a 200% adoption increase and a 30% plus improvement in end user engagement. Harris is a very approachable guy. He's got a lot to share. So make sure that you take a look at that post and reach out to it directly. 
And then if you like to read about CIOs and CTOs, I really want to advise you to take a look at Jason's piece on CIO.com. Jason is the uh, CTO at MLB, and he's talked about his digital transformation and how his work has enabled his organization to consume analytics better, but also his fan to be more engaged with data. So take a look at his piece and reach out to Jason as well uh, to make sure you can learn from his experience. Now, finally, if you need to sit back and think about these predictions, uh, I would suggest that you pick up the book of the week uh, that I've highlighted on my LinkedIn profile. This is the book of general ignorance. Why am I giving you this book? Well, first, it's a fun read. It's intriguing. But more importantly, I think it'll remind us that when it comes to prediction, there's actually very little that we know for sure. And a lot of it about the future is that you're actually making your own future. So remember that. It's important to remember that. As always, you know, I don't have all the time in this quick five minute post to share all the resources that are important for your modernization project. So make sure you click on the link down below and head over on to the blog that I wrote uh, that has all access to the resources that you need. As always, ping me if I forgot anything, ping me throughout the week like so many of you have done that uh, so I can call out content that's important to the community. I hope you will find this post and all these resources in my blog helpful to you. Let me know how I can build better content for you and, and create more engagement and create more connections across the community. Have a great week, stay data driven, and I will see you next week.